Good afternoon folks, Mark here and welcome to the sofa on this disgustingly hot day. If you watched my last video, well, firstly congratulations for being able to face another. Secondly, you may remember this disturbing fleshy lamp. Carrying on from that, I was in the mood to paint more flesh. So what better than the bat from Mr. Lee's Minis? I'll go clean this up and I'll see you at the painting table. I really don't like cleaning up mold lines and joins. Lucky for me, busts are usually cast well and don't take much work. Interestingly, the box art for this bust got the tongue shortened, which I guess goes to show you should never be afraid to tweak pieces. Anyway, despite the tedium, I got it cleaned up, filled a tiny chin bubble, assembled it, very difficult that bit, and gave it a wash ready for priming. Then I decided I agreed with the box. That tongue wasn't quite working for me. I wanted some length, but the flare at the tip had to go. A quick snip, a shave back, and some more filing fixed that fairly quickly. Now, on to priming. I'd been thinking about the scene this bat was in while I got him ready. It was a moonlit night when the monster cornered its latest victim, pale ears catching the soft, cool glow of the sky. But this was no helpless peasant. With cross in one hand and torch in the other, a desperate hunter would fight to the last. That meant a slightly blue-tinted white from above and slightly behind as a secondary light source. The main one, though, would be the torch in the hunter's hand, below and to the right. Turns out they weren't kidding when they named this irradiated yellow. A little bit of thinned out red over the top brought it back into torch range, though. And then I remembered the plan to use a paler cream gray as a base color rather than fighting to cover the darker primer with flesh tones. <sighs> back to the spray booth we go. Much the same process, but this time with a paler base coat, which meant the red and yellow didn't make it lighter and it looked like utter dog shit. Really important first step though, while lounging in front of YouTube, I decided that the eyes should reflect the scene. A dark figure silhouetted against hazy moonlight, torch in hand, their reflection gleaming in black soulless eyes. Simple enough to do in Photoshop, but I definitely got carried away. When I measured, the eyes were about 2mm high. Most of the detail would be both impossible to paint and too small to look good, so it needed to be simpler. In the end, I went for a basic night sky glow with black horizon, slowly building up the shape of the hunter and the light cast from his torch. It was pretty fiddly and took some back and forth to get the edges of his limbs right. But after 20 minutes or so, I had enough of a reflection to stop and gloss the eyes. Then I went for a lie down to recover. The only thing between me and the skin now was the mouth, which I started at black, painting the midtones on the gums where the light would hit, and blending orange and yellow into the highlights to give a definite tint to them.
the teeth were similar, my usual yellow tan midtones over black, and brighter yellow as highlights. A snake-like tongue starting at pink and fading to black at the tip seemed like a good match to the already dark mouth. You probably won't be surprised to hear it was also roughed up to mid-tones and then highlighted... highlight? with pale yellow glazes. I made sure to add an extra sharp highlight of almost white for that shiny wet look although I'd end up glossing the tongue later on anyway. And so the skin began. Sort of. I actually followed some anatomy diagrams to position the veins, going for that more realistic pattern although it was a bit vague around the ears, because finding diagrams of bat head blood flow was tricky. Who'd have thought? The veins were purple, but after a little consideration of how things look in reality, I decided to ignore that and do arteries in red. Mostly for variation, as very few blood vessels actually look red through the skin. Sitting back and looking at my progress so far, I was hoping all this prep work wasn't going to make a mess of the end result. It didn't exactly look good. This time, the skin really did begin, with a lot of glazes of flesh tones. I went back and forth, building up the skin to cover the veins, switching between purples for shading, and yellows or oranges for highlights. The airbrushing might have looked bad, but it did at least tell me where to focus. On that note though, I'll leave you to enjoy, or skip, the process for a couple of minutes.
Anyone still awake? After all of that, there was one last thing to do. I printed a sarcophagus as a plinth, filled it with plaster for weight, and cleaned it up. This is actually number three, because I had issues with the plaster despite having done it before. Since I couldn't really leave a detailed plinth black, I gave it some basic shading and highlights by airbrush before switching to washes and dry brushing. I used some flock to add moss. The plaque got picked out a little bit in copper metallics to finish the look. Then all it needed was the bat gluing into the hole. So there we go, one large bat facing off against his mortal enemy. Obligatory painter's whinge this time? Water washable printer resin does not respond well to plaster. Not sure exactly why, but for plinths, I guess it's standard resin from now on. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how he ended up. Took a lot of building up, but the light across the face worked out nicely. Oh, and those eyes. Okay, let's upgrade from pretty happy to really pleased. Also, it was fun, which is the main thing. And with that, maybe I'll see you next time.